Welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to take a look at day four of the Women's World Championship happening in Utica, USA. So we'll hop right into it today with the scores from today's game. Starting off with a 4-1 to victory for Germany over Japan. Now this was a game that was highlighted by, by Japan's inability to put the puck in the back of the net. And we've seen it time and time again with Japan that they can dominate the pace of play all through the game. But they just can't find the back of the net. And this game was no different with Japan putting up one goal. It was basically a throwaway goal by that point. It was three to one or three nothing. The three one goal was what Japan scored. So really, at the end of the day, it just wasn't really a relevant goal to them. And then Germany, of course, put in the empty net soon thereafter. But at the same time, you know, time after time, we've seen this problem with Japan. Dates back in the last, you know, five, six, seven years. They just have struggled to find the back of the net. They were a Group A team in, I believe it was last year or the previous year, and they've just struggled to really find their way to put the puck in the back of the net consistently. They can always play with these bit, these higher-end teams. It's just they can't quite find the back of the net, and that is their, their biggest Achilles heel out of any game they played. We saw it with China uh, the other day. As for Germany, they look good today. Abstrider and net was pretty solid, and, and it was good when she needed to be. So... For the Germans, it's they're on a good they're on a good path. I'll say that. And when we look at it, sort of looking ahead to what they're going to be, you know, they're looking to try and get as high up in Group B as possible. They'll have a big game against the Swedes coming up, and that one will likely decide who takes that top spot in Group B. But at the same time, both teams played a really good game today. Japan has looked really good at this tournament, just lacking that finishing ability. So we'll move along here to the second game of the day between the U.S. and Finland. Now, this game was a doozy between two of probably arguably the biggest powerhouses we have. You have Canada as well. But at the same time, Finland is a team that started off this tournament on a real low note, losing to Czechs 4 nothing. They played Canada the other day, and now they're playing the U.S. A tough start to this tournament for them. But at the same time, they played a great game today capitalized on the U.S.'s mistakes. We talked about it in the recap video yesterday about how the Finns were going to play this game, and they executed to perfection tonight. Just unfortunately couldn't keep the puck out when they needed to. There was two sort of weak goals. They did bench their starter, Ahola, off the top. So there was part of a problem there with the Finns. They sort of knew coming in that they were the underdogs, not likely to take this one. So it kind of appears that they're going to settle for that fourth and fifth spot in Group A, which just means that, they, that they'll likely have to play Switzerland in the quarterfinals, which they will have a tune-up for that coming up a little bit later in the week. But at the same time, remember, this is a team that is pretty solid all in all, and Finland's played that way throughout the tournament. You know, they started rough, they have got better in the Canada game, and they are really good right now. And they're, they're a team that's definitely feeling it as they move along in this term, so a team to watch for. As for the U.S., they played really sloppy early. They'll have to clean that up, especially when they're going to play a team like Canada. They're a, when you play Canada, if you make a mistake, it'll end up in the back of your net, guaranteed. The Finns is probably about 75 to 80% tonight. So when you look at it, you know, the U.S. took a bunch of bad penalties early on. We saw that in the Czech game, too. It's been sort of a trend for the U.S. so far. They just haven't played to the high standard that they should be. When we look at it, you know, they're going to have a tough matchup in Canada. So definitely have to be make sure you're at the top of your game for that. But with that, we'll take a look at the news now from today, starting off with Germany. I won't back down. It's a great song. But at the same time, Germany's not backing down from this one. Japan played a really solid game today, but Germany was there every single step of the way. They played a great game too. And as for Japan, the news for Japan, I mean, it seems to be Japan is versing that big red thing, also known as a goal. Just unfortunately cannot find the back of the net. That's one of the biggest storylines from today, really the entire tournament for Japan. As we see sort of see them moving along in this tournament, that was something to definitely watch for, see if they can find the back of the net from here on out there and a win or go home mentality. So we'll see if they can pull it off there. As for Finland, they were oh so close today. A couple of little, a couple of saves or a couple of paddle in the right spot. And this and that game was completely different. So hats off to Finland for playing a great game today. But at the same time, we'll talk about the U.S. now with needing 60. They need a full 60 minute effort if they're going to beat the higher end team like Canada at this tournament. They've been playing or they've started off really poorly the last couple games. So we'll see when they play Canada coming up whether or not they can figure it out on that end. When I'll take a look at the standings, starting off in Group A, we have the U.S. in first place with nine points, 
Canada in second with six points, the Czechs in third place with three points, Switzerland in fourth, two regulation losses, and Finland in last place in Group A with three regulation losses. As for Group B, we have Sweden and Germany tied in first with six points each. China is in third place with two points. Remember the overtime win over Japan, or the shootout win rather, over Japan as well as Japan is loser of that, so they, all, they get the one point, as well as Denmark in last place with two regulation losses. Remember, the bottom two teams are relegated, kicked out of the tournament for next year. As well, the top six teams at the end of this tournament will be the end up in that top spot and make it to the Olympics automatically, so lots to play for in Group B as well. As we'll take now a look at the schedule for tomorrow, we have three games on tap. We're back to the three-game schedule, not two anymore. But we will see a really solid game. And remember, it's do or die for Japan here. We have Japan taking on Sweden at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I would highly recommend this game. Watch watch this game because one of the things I really want to pay attention to is whether or not Japan and Sweden are going to remain tight. This game should be a tight game. Whenever Japan plays, it seems to be sort of that tight checking game. We'll see if Sweden is able to break through that. And if they do, Japan is likely going home in this tournament. We'll take a look at the second game now between Canada and Czechia, 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. In my opinion, this might be the game of the day. I'll, I'll say the 11 a.m. one is going to be the game of the day, but the Canada-Czech game is going to be a huge, huge game for Group A. Czechs have looked really good. Canada's been, you know, mediocre to what they should be playing like. They're obviously played really well. But they're a team that I'd expect to be playing a lot better at this tournament. So we'll see if they can break through there. 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for that one. And then last game of the day at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time will be between, the, between China and Denmark. And this is going to be a game to definitely pay attention to. I think when we look at it, it'll be a really tight checking game. And it's really, you know, you're, you're playing for your tournament lives. You showed it in the last graphic between that, that sort of last place in relegation. Denmark has to win out to stay alive. China, if they can beat Denmark, they're looking really good in this tournament to sort of stay at stay atop and, and make it to the quarterfinals, make, keeping them in the tournament for the next year. Remember, the top three teams in Group B will make it on. So it's very, very important for China to win this game. Very important for Denmark to win this game. It's going to be an, an excellent game. So I'd say either the Japan-Sweden game will be the, the sort of the game of the day, and China and China and Denmark will be another really, really good one. So definitely stay tuned for that. And we will now throw it out to the questions from today. We have it. We sort of throw out a poll on the Twitter. So if you haven't already, be sure to follow us on Twitter at onthefly1515. So the questions from today. The first one is from Mo Gridiron Geek, who says, "You aren't wrong about Smile Japan. I've had to look." on them every year since 2017 they do everything right and skate well but always lack scoring punch sniping so hopefully japan's not back to square one or division one and this is a really really important point to take note of remember japan has been really struggling to find the back of the net at this tournament and, and it's just been a storyline for in the last couple of years you know they play really really good hockey if they can keep the game close enough you know force overtime or a shootout that seems to be a favorable result for them but at the end of the day they've really struggled to do that so we'll see here whether or not you know they can figure it out especially now that it's do or die they can find their offensive touch but at the same time of course time will tell on that one so we'll throw it up to the second question of the day comes from cares about hockey who says should they switch goalies after the first first goal looks soft and two on four shots so this was of course after the u.s game after that first period where it was a 2-2 hockey game right and if you remember there's a goal challenge right at the end of that first period which put finland on the power play so the question was you know should they take out aaron frankel and i said you know no you know, they, the truth is, then the way Finland plays is that if they're going to take a shot, it's going to be a high quality shot. We've seen it time and time again, that the, the chances, the offensive chances for Finland were majority, majority breakaways, two on one, odd woman rushes, whatever it might be. But at the same time, remember when we look at it, at the end of the day, breakaways a lot harder to stop than, you know, the perimeter shots that Finland forces, which is why I love the trap style defense. But with that, if you made it this far in the video, Thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you realize you're subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on day four of the Women's World Championship. Until next time, see you.